Book of Hours is determined to remain an essential platform that offers a creative interpretation for lockdown skeptics and experts who have been censored by mainstream press. Thanks to your donations, we can carry on doing this essential work as working artists. These big issues of the day are vital and need to be heard. So please share our videos, subscribe to our YouTube channel, make a one-time donation on our PayPal page, but most importantly, please be a part of our team on our Patreon page. Go to patreon.com slash book of hours and hit the blue button titled become a patron. Thank you. Since the beginning, at least since we began producing our work, we have never called ourselves truthers or aligned ourselves with the truth movement. What we have done is produced content based on research, facts, and ideas, weaving them all together through intuition and informed speculation. And throughout all that, we've never come out and said that we're speaking the truth. Instead, We talk about actual events, actions, or behaviors that do take place or have happened, which in turn affect our daily lives in real ways, large or small. What we have found instead is that with a few exceptions, the people and content producers who are claiming to speak the truth are really just reflecting their beliefs. We especially find this among people who want to lift up politicians and leaders as people who reflect what they believe is the truth, or more importantly, what they want those people to be in their own minds. We have ensured that our frontline workers have all the tools they need. My administration's invoked the Defense Production Act and related authorities over 100 times and have made a historic investment into our industrial base. Donald Trump first invoked the Defense Production Act, or the DPA, in March of 2020. Eight months later, on November 13th, 2020, he has invoked the act in his words hundreds of times. Historically, the DPA is invoked during wartime situations when the United States government can take over the production of a business, say a factory, and force it to produce something the factory normally does not produce. So the U.S. government could seize the entire means of production. That could mean every business in the country and use or absorb those business resources to counteract a national threat to U.S. safety. In the 1990s, pay for performance contracts were created by the United States government, which adds stipulations and rules which contractor companies and vendors must meet. We know that the pay for performance concept has become more embedded into government contracting and we can assume government funding as well. Pay for success financing is a financial mechanism that shifts financial risk from a traditional funder, usually the government, to a new investor who provides upfront capital to scale an evidence-based social program to improve outcomes for a vulnerable population. If an independent evaluation shows that the program achieved agreed upon outcomes, then the investment is repaid by the traditional funder. If not, the investor takes the loss. So if it's profitable to create pay-for-success small business loans that only provide just enough to keep the small business afloat, then there is an incentive to create other financial products that use pay-for-success outcome-based rules in order to keep those small businesses coming back to borrow more in order to close the gaps needed, which in turn grows the market for that type of financing. If those gaps continue, 
the market expands and more investment opportunities to help small businesses continue. We know that the Federal Reserve provided loans and bought up debt from large corporations, which was issued through the U.S. Treasury. This is essentially a merger of corporate and state power, which is the definition of fascism. The CARES Act of 2020 provided $510 billion in expanded lending for businesses and local governments. $377 billion in new loans and grants for small businesses, and $127 billion for hospitals, for ventilators, and other equipment. It also created a $150 billion coronavirus relief fund for state and local governments. Knowing what we do about the DPA, pay for performance, pay for success financing, and the issuance of cash and purchasing of debt by the Fed and the Treasury Department, we can assume that the United States government is on its way to owning each and every business in the country by having majority ownership of that business. And if not, having the ability to dictate to businesses what they produce, what their policies are, and how they do business. This means that businesses, all businesses, must do the bidding of the government. This is why companies like Costco, Sprouts, and Starbucks are so militant about COVID-related policies like masks and social distancing. The government has seized everything and the businesses have collaborated to make your experiences militant in nature. From your pumpkin spiced latte, to getting a haircut, buying food, or buying supplies at the hardware store, Every experience you have now is under the control and direction of the government. Forcing you to wear a mask is an act of violence. Forcing you to stand two meters apart, track your biometric habits online, or use your social credit score to set you up for impact failure is violence. When government and businesses merge, it is an act of violence. This violence we are experiencing every single day is fascism. Right now, the Democratic Party are grooming a future fascist dictator in Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who pushed hard for invoking the Defense Production Act. At the same time, the Republican Party are allowing Dominionists, who believe in a Christian fundamentalist theocracy, to infiltrate its seats of power in the Trump administration. And while this is happening, global governance is manifesting through regionalization efforts and the destruction of nation states throughout the world. We believe that the CARES Act is acting as a bridge between government occupation of our entire nation from the very small to the very large. We have no concrete evidence like a signed contract, but given what we know and with the empirical evidence that is out there, we can speculate that our society and the nation is being destroyed through the merging of business and its own government. We know that the U.S. government, through all its apparatuses, are forcing violence on its citizens, killing its economy and destroying social ties while creating hysteria and fear through the narrative of a viral infection as well as a narrative of possible civil war through the mass media. We know that Donald Trump is a billionaire businessman who is in office as the President of the United States. Donald Trump is not going to save the citizens from the COVID tyranny. He has invoked an act that has effectively merged government and business, not in a socialist manner, which can benefit citizens, but in a corporatist, fascist manner that only benefits corporate and government leaders 
and hurts U.S. citizens. We know that the Democratic leadership since at least Bill Clinton's administration has been chipping away at civil, human, and constitutional rights and is not the party of the people it claims to be. And the Democrats, along with the Republicans, have been working for a long time to merge business and government and create a new form of feudalism that will further erode and stratify our society and allow for the return of slavery. This is why we never promote representative democracy. We feel it's dangerous to put your power and your autonomy into the hands of others to represent you in government. If there is any real truth, then the truth is that there is a deliberate destruction of our society taking place through economic manipulation, propaganda, and fear. The truth is that everyone knows that something is wrong and that something bad is happening, but can't agree on what that something is and are completely incapable of doing anything about it. The public has been propagandized and lied to, to the point of incapacitating any mass outcry. This deliberate act of sabotage allows the government to continue its tyranny with no massive demonstrations, without any challenge, and without any meaningful dissent. In a country founded on violence, a country founded as a fiscal military state, a country that justifies neoliberalism with common good policies, and a country that has the largest prison population on the planet. It is a country that is in the midst of full-blown fascism. The truth is that your life and how you live it is over unless you do something about it now. What will it take for you to stand up, stop looking for heroes, stop looking for saviors and take back your autonomy? What is it? Where is your line in the sand? You got me like in a box I adore everything you touch Say do you believe that we were meant to be Body craves identity Green mango peach, what a tease Calling me Like the rainbow Oh pretty please, take it easy No one lies, push and show Let go of control Green mango 
Peach, what a tea. 